Hi, I'm Mark, and this is Let's Vibe, the channel all about crystals and our feelings. So in this video, I want to talk about a variety of black obsidian. And this variety is known as Apache Tear. So you can see, um, if you're familiar with black obsidian, which is just very smooth and um, dark jet black, um, this variety is, you know, unless it's been tumbled, this variety naturally has like some divots and soft faces, um, no hard angles or anything, but just, it's not quite as smooth as um, what you see with black obsidian or other kinds of obsidian. So Apache Tear Obsidian comes from Arizona, uh, Nevada, and some other places within the American Southwest, as well as um, Northern Mexico. And Apache Tear Obsidian gets its name from a legend of the Apache people in uh, a part of Arizona where there was a battle with American soldiers sometime in the 1870s and the Apache warriors uh, were outnumbered and rather than be defeated by the uh, or at the hands of the American army, they are said to have run themselves with their on their horses off of a cliff. And when the wives and and the women of the tribe heard this news that their warriors had died, uh, they wept and their tears upon falling to the ground became these pieces of obsidian. So that's the legend behind this type of obsidian. And this kind of obsidian actually, you can't, I don't think you can see it on camera, but from my point Point of view, um, if viewed in bright light like sunlight, um, Apache Tear is translucent. So it's not, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> uh, this variety is not completely opaque um, like black obsidian. Um, it does have little bit of translucence when held in sunlight. Um, but uh, given that legend surrounding the stone and its name, this, the legend connects with the stone's energies. This is a very divine feminine type of energy, um, especially earth-based divine feminine mother earth type energy. You know, other kinds of black obsidian could easily be described as more masculine in their energy, but this definitely has a very nurturing quality. And that's why this is one of my personal favorite varieties of obsidian. Um, it's very nurturing. It res it it resonates not just with your root chakra, but also your heart chakra. And it's very protective. It's very grounding. Um, this variety is said to have um, earth and fire elemental properties. So very grounding. And it has a much softer, much gentler 
vibration of protection than regular black obsidian or really most other varieties of, of obsidian. I would say Apache Tear is probably one of the most, if not the most, gentle and comforting varieties of obsidian. And I wanted to talk about, well, I was inspired to talk about this stone because um, the, the subject of crying uh, has been coming up for me. And not just the subject uh, intellectually, but um, the experience of crying. And I've been thinking about it a lot. And uh, when I think of crying and using crystals with sadness, grief, crying, Apache Tear is pretty much the first crystal that comes to mind uh, for processing times of grief, emotions of grief, any kind of sadness, mourning, loss. This stone is perfect for carrying in your pocket, putting under your pillow at night. This is a stone that can be held and kept with you and on you for very long periods. And it has the ability to hold your emotions, your feelings, um, like sadness and grief. And, you know, I mentioned in my previous video how, you know, there's been some turbulent, intense astrological transits and energies going on lately. And I'm having some of my own personal uh, uh, transits that are just, they've been turbulent. They've really been like, bringing about a lot of change. And, and so there's definitely been a lot of times of crying. And it makes me think about how, especially here in the US, many of us are taught not to cry. We're taught, especially if you're a boy, a man, you're taught that you shouldn't cry or that it's just, not the right thing to do, or it, however it's put, it's nonsense. <laughs> it's utter nonsense. Um, when I think about the times where I've had to cry and I've allowed myself to cry, what I always think of is how good I feel afterwards. And that's something that we often don't talk about. I, I, it's, I don't think people really think about it or, or focus on that part because, you know, obviously you're feeling a lot of pain. So that's what, that's the most salient feeling when you're crying. But immediately after crying, I always notice a sense of relief a sense of um, having released something. And physically, that that's very much the case. You're releasing tears, and tears have the function of releasing certain toxins from the body. So you are physically releasing things, but you're also emotionally and psychologically and spiritually releasing things when you allow yourself to cry. And that's why I just think it's such nonsense um, to tell someone that they shouldn't cry or to teach kids that they shouldn't cry. No, please do. <laughs> Let yourself cry. I heard this... <laughs> some bogus uh, young male influencer podcaster on TikTok <laughs> uh, 
telling guys that you don't need to cry. You could just go to the gym. Um, going to the gym is great. Going to the gym is definitely a great activity. It can definitely help you release emotions, pain, hurt that's been held in the body. I think that's great for releasing the f physical um, manifestations of psychological pain. But to say that you don't need to cry is just, that's such bullshit. <laughs> Go to the gym and cry. I Like, let yourself cry. Let yourself cry. Because the result, the... What comes after that is healing, a sense of relief. Even in my darkest times, the worst times of my life, even then... You know, when nothing, when I felt like there was no hope and I couldn't see when or how anything could get better, even in those times, crying uh, created a sense of relief, at least just in the moment. And I think it was like, you know, for me, it took step by step by step, however small, to reach um, a state of recovery. And I see crying as part of those many, many little steps that were taken on the road to healing from my own depression and issues around anxiety and PTSD. So that's why I'm just like, I'm, I recommend crying. I recommend letting yourself cry. And as, of course, as always, make sure if you're gonna allow yourself to go into your feelings, if you're gonna take a dive into your emotions, um, definitely make sure you have some kind of uh, support around you that you can trust, whether that's a mentor, a therapist, a trusted friend. Um, make sure you have some kind of support. Um, and if you're going to do it, if you, if you decide to do that, if you feel like you need to just let yourself cry, um, Apache Tear really is the perfect stone for that. It, it, carries the energy of a grieving mother, um, a grieving woman who is, who has the strength, because that's what it takes is inner strength. She has the strength to allow herself to weep and grieve and thereby go through the healing process and the acceptance, the process of accepting um, such feelings and such uh, experiences. This Apache tear is good for higher perspectives and higher understanding around challenges in our lives. This stone um, can help you see the greater purpose behind difficulties. And it can help you come to terms with the presence of hurt or pain and, and um, help you build the inner strength to allow those feelings to be present and know that they will pass. You know, sometimes, especially if you're in a really low place, it can, sometimes it can feel like, oh, what if these bad feelings, these this sadness, what if it never ends? Because um, you just can't really feel the end of it. It's, it just, it's very deep. Um, 
but a stone like Apache Tear can help you um, give you the confidence, the strength, the protection, and the grounding to stand in that kind of place within you and um, and not feel afraid of it being overwhelming. Um, so this stone, definitely, the more you use it, the more familiar it feels. It kind of becomes a, quote, familiar, which is a word used for any kind of spirit, um, spiritual entity or energy that um, has a close connection with you. Uh, so that can definitely happen with Apache Tear. It can grow to be very familiar energetically. So I highly encourage anyone who is interested in crystals or who likes using crystals and is dealing with any kind of sadness or feels like they need a cry a little bit or a lot. <laughs> um, Apache Tear is the stone for that. Now, uh, I was trying to find, it took me a little while to think of a, a song that fit with these, with the energies of this stone, but I had to go once again with Evanescence. This time I went with their third album, I think it's just titled Evanescence. And the song is My Heart is Broken. <laughs> so right away from that title, you can see the connection. Um, <laughs> but that song, it's it's just very, it carries a, 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 a sense of sadness, but, but also a sense of strength, I think. And, um, so I just feel like it's it's a great strong a great song for Apache Tear. Sadness in the presence of strength. So I will include a link in the description box below to My Heart is Broken by Evanescence. And I encourage everyone to leave a comment or question below the video. And once again, thank you so much for vibing with me.